Me, then please do. And I'd like you to please give a warm welcome to ALDS President Martin Weller, who is chairing this meeting of the Assembly. So please put your hands together for Martin Weller. Thanks, Maren. Uh, I'm taking a note of all those who are leaving, Laurie and Peter. Don't think you're getting away with it. Um, okay, so hi, everyone. welcome to the Assembly. Uh, this is the agenda, so you're going to get a warm welcome from me, a proper warm welcome in a minute. Um, and then I'm going to talk you through what we've done in the Assembly uh, since it was founded. Uh, and then Marilyn's going to talk about helping to shape the next talk strategy. And then we're going to allow each of the member and special interest groups to come up and present about themselves. And lastly, close with what's coming up. So first of all, the warm welcome. Welcome to the Assembly. So um, at last year's ALT-C, uh, we passed the, the governance which would allow the Assembly to come into being. Um, so that was quite significant. And the point of it was to really give a route for members to have a kind of voice in alt strategy and direction. Um, and so I'll take you through what we've done since then. So we had the inaugural meeting in February uh, at UCL down in London. Uh, this was the, uh, the motley crew of people who came along to that. Um, and we kind of really just used that to explore what would the assembly look like, get ideas from them, and then sort of feed forward uh, on what that would be like. And one really uh, great achievement from that is that um, since February, We've established the East of England Alt Members Group, which now completes Alt UK domination. So we've turned the map green, next step, the world. You know, it's like, a, I was, I'm not going to mention Brexit, so it's fine. I'm not going to mention it, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> so that, but that was a kind of a big ambition for Alt to kind of make sure that map was all green, and, and we've done that this year. Um, also through the assembly, we, we put it to them and discussed that the, um, the uh, Evaluation and Learner Experience SIG group. Uh, this has been around for some time, it's a very vibrant community, and they've now come under the ALT umbrella, if you like, of, of special interest groups. So we're really uh, glad to welcome them into, into the ALT fold. And one of the things that came out of that meeting back in London was people said, you know, we kind of run all these different groups and we all kind of do our own thing and we've got really good practice, but we don't get a chance to share it. And so what they worked on, all those groups kind of got together and discussed um, through a joint document. Uh, producing a community guide so anyone setting up a new interest group would have advice on, on what to do and where to go from there. So that's kind of, that was the direct output of that um, the early meeting and the subsequent online meetings. Um, and the Assembly has also really helped us inform the CMORC pathways and tomorrow, big announcement, uh, Associate and Senior CMORC pathways are going to be uh, officially launched tomorrow. And uh, that this was again the kind of, the, the role of the Assembly was to help feed in and to um, give us direction on these things. Um, and lastly, to help us shape the next alt strategy. Uh, so uh, we did this strategy four years ago, was it, Marilyn? I mean, I cannot say three years ago. Okay, good. Uh, and it was a very kind of open process. I've been involved in lots of strategy documents, and God, they are boring. But the alt strategy was actually really interesting and really good to be involved with. And so we really wanted to use the assembly as a vehicle to kind of get feedback and to help them shape uh, the next strategy, which leads me nicely on to Marilyn's talk about the next strategy. Thank you, Martin, and um, great to see our assembly being so actively engaged in all the different things that has been happening only since February. When the new strategy is um, consultation is now underway, and so I wanted to share with you just a couple of ways in which we're inviting members to engage, in which we really want to hear your voices, your priorities, the things that you want to see ALT address in the next few years. And I wanted to share with you a little bit of an insight into what that process looks like for the Board of Trustees and for senior staff, because obviously some of the consultation is already underway. And this particular piece of visual thinkery is a product of the earliest meeting um, for some of the trustees and some of the staff to get together to start working on the new strategy. Now, there are a whole range of opportunities to engage as we go on to that journey. And you can see up here the suggestion box that is already live and receiving suggestions um, on the ALD website where anyone can provide input and make suggestions. Then today's meeting is part of our way to try and spread the word so that for those of you in particular who are running members groups or special interest groups, that you are able to find out how to engage with the strategy and hopefully vitalize your communities into providing input. 
The Winter Conference in December is going to be a hugely important milestone where we have a number of online sessions between now and the conference and then more open sessions at the conference. Last time we did the strategy, the board ran very successful webinars online for everyone who couldn't come to physical events like this one and we hope to have similar amount of engagement, if not more, this time round. And the formal consultation really concludes with our big annual survey, which will have a special section on the new strategy, hopefully informed by all the input we get between now and December. And that is open to everyone in the community to complete. Now, I wanted to specifically mention the ALT annual survey because obviously, as well as informing the internal work of ALT, it is also becoming an increasingly valuable resource, generating anonymized open data, which helps institutions within the community to map professional practice and how it is developing. One of the new ways in which we've been exploring the survey this year, and my colleague Martin Hoxie has led on this is really looking at the results from the annual survey from 2014 to 18 through, for example, a gendered perspective. Now, this is only one example of how we can make use of the data that we have in our community, and we'd like to hear from you of other things that you'd like us to include in the survey, questions you'd like us to ask, different perspectives you within your institution or you as an individual would find useful. So please consider how you might wish us to expand the survey so it can become more useful to you in the future. Now here's a summary of the consultation timeline. So as I said, it's already underway starting in June. And now in September, this is where we are, where we're kicking off the formal consultation with members groups and special interest groups. There'll also be another update on this at the annual general meeting tomorrow afternoon. Then the assembly meetings in November and October will feature consultations with members as well. And they are open to anyone and everyone and all online. And then in December, as I mentioned, the annual survey consultation with the Winter Conference. And excitingly, the new strategy is only a few months away in February. Now, as Martin mentioned in his introduction, the assembly is only launched in February and was only agreed at the last AGM. So I just wanted to remind you all, because I think many of us are still getting used to the way it works and how it works and what's involved, that you are all here as part of it and a very important part of the governance structure, advising the Board of Trustees and hopefully being supported by the staff team. Now, many of you will have noticed that we've been short a membership manager for a few months now. And I'm very, very excited to say that since yesterday, we have a new membership manager in the form of our now very own Debbie Baff. And so I was hoping you could maybe put your hands together briefly to just welcome our new membership manager who will work with all of you as members in member groups and special interest groups. I think Debbie is just over here if you want to give a wave. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, and now I hope that Martin and I will be able to welcome on the stage um, five-minute updates from various members' groups. We have updated the agenda as of four o'clock this afternoon, but if you are from a members' group and we haven't called you up and you're not on the agenda, there's open slots at the very end of the meeting. You each have maximum of five minutes, and as we want to give everyone a voice, please stick to that time. So the first members group that we are inviting up to the stage is the East Midlands Learning Technologies Groups. Anyone here from that group? Fantastic. Rich, please welcome Rich. Thanks, Warren. Um, I'm here uh, as one of the co-chairs of uh, East Midlands Learning Technologies Group, and my other co-chair, Laura, is sitting down there. Um, we had a slight mix-up over trains and timings over who was going to do this, so I've got the job, but that's fine. Uh, so let's tell you a few things that we've been up to this year. Uh, we had a good event back um, in the springtime, um, which was designed around assessment, um, so looking at things around um, authenticity on anonymous marking. Um, this has become quite a hot topic um, in some of our particular areas um, around the East Midlands, and we had a lot of people here um, at uh, a session hosted at Loughborough and we talked a lot around uh, things around anonymity and authenticity 
Um, now, we didn't record the sessions. We do, do try and record our sessions with uh, our host institutions. Um, but we had a kind of uh, very sensitive discussions going on around this particular area. Um, and the participants didn't really want certain things being recorded. And it was very much a kind of uh, closed house of things that we were talking about because there were some things that we didn't want leaking out of those four walls uh, on that particular day. So uh, it was uh, a really good session. We had loads of participation um, from the people that turned up. And uh, those that were here um, at the event definitely uh, seemed to enjoy it and were very... Uh, um, very good with their feedback about what they'd liked about the session. And it was basically not a lot of people talking at them. There was lots of sitting around in groups and talking about the issues and going over some of the things that uh, we'd been going on. And uh, specifically at Loughborough, um, we are moving to uh, a fully anonymous uh, submission and marking from, uh, from this September slash October. Um, so we shared our initial thinking around that. Um, and some of the things there helped us to clarify what we were doing. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Um, and I think we concluded that the technology bit is really easy. All the various tools that are out there, we use Moodle and Turnitin and other things. It's really easy to get that set up. Um, it's the humans that get in the way and make this quite tricky. Um, particularly, for example, students, if you ask them to submit things anonymously, um, then they'll put in their name as the first thing they do or in the file name or everything else. And there's certain things you can do, but some things you just can't get out of. So. Um, yes, I suspect there'll be a lot more people looking into that as the next year comes. Um, for our next event, um, there's some possibilities um, around something at Derby around the Sticky Campus um, that we very briefly talked about. We might do an online event around things around Office 365 and Microsoft Teams, um, which keeps changing its, its raison d'etre every single day um, so far, but I think it's going to settle down very soon. So. Um, there's a lot of interest in using some of those technologies and kind of bringing them in alongside things that are happening in VLEs and getting teams working together. Um, so we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of things to think about um, before we work out what our next event is. But um, yeah, we've had a really good, uh, a good session this year um, and we've definitely got an active group of members who uh, like to come along and share and they're definitely not backwards in coming forwards, are they? <laughs> right, I think that's enough from me. Oh. Oh, yes, sorry. It's a shameless self-promotion, which I forgot. Um, there's a joint East Midlands, West Midlands, and M25 group uh, tomorrow afternoon. Sadly, we've got to compete with the Gaster. Sorry, Gaster people. Um, but uh, we've got uh, a session on uh, technology reviews, including the um, VLA review, review toolkit. And we'll also be talking about lecture capture reviews and um, voting system reviews and lots of other reviews. So there's a panel of four or five people um, sharing their uh, experiences of reviewing things. Right, I'll shut up now. Thank you. Yeah, and at this stage, we want to give a big shout out to the M25 group. No one from the group is actually here to give a live update, but our agenda has also written updates. So please do visit the online agenda for details. Now, next up is the Northeast Regional Group. And I'm hoping I'm going to welcome someone to the stage from that members group. Fantastic. Please give a warm welcome. Welcome to you. disappear behind these things. Um, okay, I'll tiptoe. Um, so I'm Julie from Durham and my uh, co-chair over there is Graham Redshaw Boxwell from Newcastle University. We've been running a regional group for a long time but we morphed into an alt regional group about 18 months ago. Um, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, so we were running groups, we would decide, okay, let's run a group meeting, when are we going to run it? It was very ad hoc, we'd choose a date, then it was which, who's going to talk about what? Everything we talked about was all relevant, but it was a mishmash of what we were going to talk about. Somebody would talk about one thing and nothing seemed to relate to each other anyway. Um, but we all agreed as a learning technologist from the five institutions in the Northeast that we, we found a value in meeting together to sit and talk and have an open conversation in a safe environment. Um, is this too loud? Okay. So when we became an alt group, we went to the alt assembly earlier. Was it last year? Was it this year? This year. We, we took on board having a management structure. So that is what we went back and put in place. So the five institutions now, we each have a representative on the management board. We have scheduled three dates throughout the coming year. 
we have decided that we will run a theme um, at the first half of the day. So we've chosen accessibility as our first one. We've chosen the host, so we rotate it round the five institutions so that not one institution has to keep hosting it. And so our next one is going to be about accessibility. Um, but we decided that we still wanted to have a free flow afternoon uh, session um, so that if there are any topics, hot topics that people will come up, they could actually just list them. So at the moment, we are gathering the management board of finding speakers to come along and talk about accessibility. Um, we have had um, Alistair McNaught talk at our last one, but we know that, for instance, York University, who are not in the Northeast, um, they are doing some good things on accessibility, so we're inviting them as guests up to talk as well. Um, we haven't been very good in the past at documenting what we've been doing, so with the new management structure, that's the, something that we are going to put into place, and so we're going to start blogging. Quite frankly, we just think it's been great that we actually meet, we share our knowledge, we share ideas, we have the discussion, and then we go away again, and then we meet four months later. But having a management structure is going to allow us to sort of articulate this and write it down and share it with the wider community. Anything else you want? I think the other thing that really helps is with our members and the fact that we have the meeting for the whole year. We normally, oh sorry, um, normally they just find out a few weeks before that there was a meeting coming up, and just allowing everyone to be more organised, um, and it allows people not just to attend uh, to increase the attendance. It also allows people to contribute more because they know the theme coming up, etc., and stuff like that. So, and it, I think it's helped me and Julie's stress levels something. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, next up, we have the, the first contribution for ALT's newest special interest group. So please put your hands together for our very brand new ALT Ellisig. three for the price of one. Um, so we are very excited to launch Alt Elastic here and um, we, I think we will explain what Elastic means. It's a bit of a mouthful but um, basically we are interested in evaluation of um, learners who are using technology and uh, my name is Tundi Vargatkins. I'm um, the chair. There's I, I'm Vicky Deal. I'm secretary. Uh, Denise Sweeney and I'm in the organising committee. Yeah, and shout out for Mary as well, who is here from Glasgow. So, uh, as Maren said, uh, we're very excited to launch this group. And so, who are we? Uh, what, what are we interested in? So, we're a community of researchers and practitioners who are very interested in peeping. So, wherever there is uh, the sort of things old community is interested in, uh, we, we, we like to peep in and see how students, learners from whatever sector are, are using um, technology and how we can go about evaluating that. The other thing we, um, again, that uh, links with what Maren said earlier, um, that one of the things we like to do is sharing um, practice and sharing resources and methodologies that we might be using uh, in this process. Um, I mean, this slide is just a pictorial representation of the sort of things we have done, and Vicky will talk a little bit about where we have come, come from as an LSE group. But what, uh, we, we like to keep up to date with research, uh, finding new methodologies um, but we, which we can use in our investigations and also disseminate and, and collaborate. Um, so one of the things we are really interested in doing uh, this year is inter-institutional collaborations, doing um, similar topics and researching um, on that and working together. I think the other thing we, we'd like to say that um, we are a very informal and friendly group, and that's uh, some of the things that people have highlighted. Um, in terms of um, another way to benefit, uh, you all know that research and scholarship can contribute to, to certification, whether it's the UK PSF, the HEA uh, Fellowship, or, or CMALT as well. So I think that's one, one of the reasons why we are quite keen to work together and share practice. 
Okay, so we can we'll talk about where we've come from. Yeah, so just very, very briefly, where we've come from, um, just to um, mention Professor Rona Sharp, who really, this is her baby. She launched this in 2008 with colleagues such as Amanda Jeffries, who've done a fabulous job in bringing together a huge uh, community. And we have re different regional groups. Um, that obviously, as we become part of, of ALT, um, a special interest group, we need to rethink how that's going to map. Um, but we have an organising committee um, that will take things forward, um, and we're very excited to do that. Um, we did a consultation with members, um, and basically, I'm going to go straight to the headline, 77% of active members opted for becoming an alt-sig. Um, we couldn't please everybody, but it was great that the majority decision was to become part of alt. Um, but what members really value is this distinct focus on learning experience research, and there's so much already I've seen in the programme so far, so that's great that we have an arena specifically for that. And it's a friendly, inclusive and member-led institution and that I think dovetails we believe dovetails very well with the alt values as well so very excited about taking things forward and just our organizing committee um, you, there's ourselves a number of other people um, so yep give us a shout if you want to get involved as well we have some people in different regions that, that haven't been so active so if you would like to be involved just give us a shout I was just going to say a few things about being a member for about four years. Coming from a practitioner background and moving into doing some doctoral work, this Elisig was fabulous in helping me really become confident as a researcher. And it's things like NEC working with experienced researchers, being able to um, share ideas and bounce ideas off people. We've had a really successful webinar series in 2018, which we recorded and had speakers, very um, illustrious speakers from all around the world, and then what we found from members of our global 2300, lots of people watching the webinars after the event, which has been really good. We did a little MOOC uh, a couple of years ago, and that was great for people to learn about methods and approaches to learner experience research and looking at the diversity across the different uh, disciplinary backgrounds people come from. So they're just a couple of the webinars we had and something from our little MOOC. We're also keen on anyone who might be doing scholarly work and wanting to disseminate or want to get part of uh, our proposed handbook. We'd really like to talk to people because it is looking at that slide about alt members. You know, research is becoming something that we need to know about what the evidence is telling us in our practice. So that's what LSIG's done for me. And it's been great to meet people um, and uh, collaborate with people. Just finally, the invitation with the dates. Um, we are having a meeting on Thursday between 11 and 12, and I, I think, um, Maureen, you had a slide on about 5% people doing research as part of their job. So either who, whoever wants to join, um, we are inviting you with open arms. So it's either the 5% already doing research or the other, I don't know, 95 whose, whose job might not be it yet, but they, but they might be interested in uh, working with us. Okay, I think that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. One of our hopes for the ALT Assembly is very much learning about what's going on within the ALT community and all the different things that are happening. And um, if, like me, you're not intimately familiar with the schedules of every single special interest groups or members groups, I'm hoping this session is informative. So next up, we welcome one of our longest established members groups. Um, and please say hello to Joe and Vicky from Alt Scotland. As we, as we, as, as we get going uh, and find the right hole to stick, stick in, we've, been, we've probably been going now for about eight years. Our usual, our usual cycle is actually to have a a sort of a plan planning committee uh, that meets that organises an event uh, in, in, in about June time, which is where kind of AP and HE staff can get along to, uh, and, and we use we use our JISC mail list. We use our JISC mail list, and somebody, I think I hope we all could hear me. Uh, we use a, we use our JISC mail list uh, to, to keep in touch with everybody, and uh, and we usually at the alt conference particularly this year when it's, when it's been in Scotland, we had a well-attended kind of 
uh, update meeting that we have to when, when we're all together at the OP conference, which we had we had today. Uh, and are you in now? You ready? Yeah, just about technology. Okay. Just about. Under pressure. So, so all, all we thought we'd do, uh, there's, 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 the, there's the mug shots. We've been having the meetings recently at, at the City of Glasgow College. Uh, uh, that, that, that's the, the items that we put on the agenda are items that come from the steering group and out of the JISC mail list. So what we try and reflect back at people are the kind of things that they, they're expressing an interest in. I don't know if you want to say anything. Sure. Um, so there was a number of different um, aspects that really came out. The chatbots provided some um, food for thought in terms of the ethical aspects of chatbots for student um, queries and support. Um, but there was a lot of focus on e-portfolios as well, as well as the ongoing commitment of Alt Scotland to open educational resources. Okay. Uh, that's that's all the the current mug shots and and, and, and you you'll get that. I'm not spending too, too too long chatting about who who we all are. Uh, in in the background, we're fortunate to have Sheila McNeil in an advisory role. So we we often often try to get an input direct from Jit from Alt just to tell us that we're, we're talking about the right things or if there's any other lessons or any other SIGs or other, any other work we should be learning from. Uh, we had some officers retire last year. Uh, again, this is from upstairs, so we, we always plug our own stuff. So that's a, a useful publication with uh, some so, 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 some nice authors from the Scottish community. Yeah, uh, and if you've got anything that you would like to plug um, or us to plug on your behalf, just let us know. Just let us know about the good work that you're doing, so we can share it. And and, and really, finally, just to give you an indication of the of the kind of things we talk about in in the background we're talking about today, uh, is a. Uh, some things are aligning quite nicely. Uh, there's a new Funding Council IT strategy up here for further and higher education, which is actually uh, and it embeds Open Scotland and the Open Scotland Declaration. So it's a real good, and that's that's partly due to the support of all consistently helping uh, Lon and I in Open Scotland and get, getting the, the, the message out. Uh, and, and some other. So these these are the kind of the kind of policy landscape and, and some of the technical landscape that we're operating in. I'm, I'm at Glasgow College just now, and iPads going to be the biggest roll out of iPads anywhere in Europe or something is just about about to happen, and that will clearly influence what universities and colleges in Glasgow have to ha have to do. Uh, and uh, for next year. Uh, Yep, so we've assembled some ideas. These were some things that people suggested for the focus of next year's event. There seems to be a lot of focus on things like um, data analytics, as well as unbundling the VLE and also accessibility. So a lot of the um, topical debates that have been covered in this conference we're going to be focusing on. So again, if you'd like to share work in this area, just give us a shout. And that's us. At any time you're up in Scotland, you're, of course, very welcome to come along to, to, to one of our Alt Scotland SIG events. Thank you. There is a, a blue Lego USB. Okay, great. Don't lose it. Excellent. And then we have next up. We're all waiting with bated breath. Um, we have a contribution from the Open Education Special Interest Group who signed up to another slot. Is there someone here from the group? Yes, hello. Do come up. Um, a warm welcome for the Open Education Special Interest Group. Okay. Just need to. multitask and talk at the same time. Um, so my name's Kelly Terrell and I'm from the University of Southampton and I'm the co-chair of the Alt Open Ed SIG um, along with Debbie who is the other co-chair in multi jobs that she has. <laughs> um, 
And I'm really standing in for Theresa McKinnon today, who's our coach, who's our, our chair, sorry, of our group. Um, oh, on the spot. So Theresa put some slides together. There we are. Because I'd like to bring her into the room properly. She's probably watching now as we speak. This is just Theresa, just giving an intro into what our group is about. Association for Learning Technologies Open Education Special Interest Group believes education is so important it needs to be available for everyone. It is our mission to advocate for open education. We share the work of other organisations which advocate open educational practices in order to widen access to learning for all. Organisations such as those which develop open source technologies and those who promote open licensing. We host webinars, discussions and activities with the support of the Association for Learning Technology which contribute to the achievement of our aims. You can now find us on Twitter and just Google Open Education SIG or find us on the ALT website. So there's an awful lot of information about our group on um, the dedicated OE SIG website. Um, the group was established in 2012 and it's got all the information about on there about our current committee members. We're very welcoming to anyone else that would like to get involved in the group. Um, we actually had our meet-up this morning, which was a great discussion about a number of things. Uh, things that the group's been doing, so largely we sort of focus on running webinars, um, sharing best practice, um, giving people the opportunity to uh, discuss and raise questions to people who, who are working in the open. Uh, the last one that we did was uh, the preview for OER 19, which um, we've been very lucky that we seem to manage to get the keynote speakers to come along and, and run a webinar <laughs> and have the opportunity to ask questions to them directly and sort of get a bit of a sneak, sneak peek of what they're going to be talking about, which is great. Um, hopefully we're going to run some more webinars this year if we've got time. Um, we're also very active in, the, in these conference events as well. So um, as I said, we had the meetup this morning. Uh, we also tend to run a meetup at the OER conferences as well, and the Ought to Winter conference will be putting things on, and Theresa tends to sort of run fun sessions as well, as well as uh, sharing uh, the, work, the work, obviously, that we need to be doing. Um, I think that's probably uh, about it. Um, I guess the other thing, as I say, is to... If anyone else wants to become a member, um, if you want to just be part of the conversation, uh, the website is open. We're always looking for people to share blog posts on there as well. Um, and as I say, open for all. Great. Thank you very much. Right. So we've got two more members groups who are going to share their work with us um, today. If you are in the room and you still want to present and we haven't um, come to you yet, we have the White Rose Learning Technology Group coming up and then the Alt East England Group coming up um, as well. So if you want to present still, please raise your hand or make yourselves known um, and we'll just get you up on stage. Right, I've slightly lost my slides, so I'm just going to get them back up. And in the meantime, please put your hands together for Graham McElhaney. Thanks, um, thanks very much, Marilyn. Thanks, everyone. Uh, this is a rather, um, I think, should we use ad hoc or impromptu as a uh, means of describing what I'm going to tell you? Um, so, main thing to report is um, we've had two meetings this calendar year. And um, they've both been in York, actually, so I was really interested in what the colleague from the Northeast group was saying, because that was, that was nearly going to be a really good segue if I'd gone on after you, but uh, that wasn't the case. But um, you're absolutely right. I'll come on to what Lillian's doing in a moment. But um, 
When we started, which was quite a few years ago, I think it was about 2010, um, it, it was a bit of an ad hoc one. and It was actually really inspired by hearing people, um, uh, Matt Lingard and Rose Heaney, talking about the M25 group. And I thought, what a fantastic thing we, still, we thought we'd do. And the focus has been, tends to be on um, what I might call crowdsourced meetings. So we, try and, we, we use uh, Google Docs and an email discussion mainly. And we allow... Uh, or we rather we like presenters to perhaps dictate what would they like to be in the group. And one of the things we try to emphasise is that um, you know if you come and make a presentation to your local SIG, that is of course a great thing you can use as part of your CMALT or as part of your SFHEA. So, so I think people have have really kind of responded well to that. So the first one of the year we had one of these kind of more open ones, um, five sort of 20 minute sessions. But then we also went a bit more thematic with our second uh, meeting, which was at the University of York at King's Manor, which is an amazing place actually, if you've not been. It's an old medieval manor, which they also hold the archeology span in. Um, and that was very much a focus on accessibility. So again, we were very lucky to have Alistair McNaught come and present a webinar, very much um, set the scene and, and, and Alistair is I think amenable to doing more of these gave us a, a sort of breakdown of you know just how scary some of that legislation might be and then we had a great presentation from Kirsten Thompson um, in York uh, effectively um, a workshop analyzing in a rather more holistic way um, the accessibility around learning resources and then we gave our old friends Blackboard a bit of a pitch because they also said they'd pay for the lunch and so they came and actually showed us Ally because we know Ally is a really big player in this field at the moment. Um, so that's kind of what we've done. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that um, we don't have anything like the same developed uh, membership and management structures that com um, other colleagues are doing. So I think that's a real work in progress for us to take on board. And uh, I've had uh, four volunteers from the group to... Um, to take a bit more of a structured approach to steering, because as I'm sure you all know, these things don't take zero time. They take a bit of time uh, to put together. Um, and the other thing I'm very conscious of is, is we probably ought to be doing more for members in terms of things like webinars in between physical meetings. So again, that's another thing we're going to look at. So really pleased to hear what people are doing there. And I think perhaps um, I was really pleased that we had an alt assembly meeting about two months ago via a webinar, and that was a great way. We had a bit of a focus on regional groups, so that I found that brilliant to be able to actually make contact with other people and find out what they're doing. So, so that's, been it. that's been it for us really. We're just going to start putting together the next meeting, which I think will be in probably November time. Thank Great stuff. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Right, so con concluding our assembly members groups update is one more special interest group, or rather a members group, and the newest established members groups for the East of England. So, Neil, take it away. Hello. Uh, so, we were founded in um, November last year. We've got three of us on the organising committee, and we had our first event in May, which was on gamification, which was a lot of fun. So we kind of theme our um, events around uh, a topic that the institution suggests. Uh, and our next one is in November. It's on the 8th of November. It's at the University of Bedford in Luton. And it is on uh, supporting um, the attainment gap with learning uh, technology. And we're looking uh, for presenters for that one. Uh, so get in touch if you want to present. And we're going to have our meeting in January. Uh, so we've got three meetings a year that we're doing. Uh, that's going to be at um, Anglia Ruskin University uh, in Cambridge. So we're going to sort of have a, a day with that one, sort of like a whole day, because we, uh, at the minute we've got a half a day. Uh, so we're going to go for a full day. It's like a sort of a, sort of a celebration, if you like, of the group. Uh, and we're doing a, doing a talk tomorrow, uh, a tour of the learning spaces at the University of Edinburgh. Um, that's at two o'clock. Uh, it's in the Appleton Tower. Um, room 205, so if you fancy doing a bit of tweeting and also learning about the university, uh, what they have to offer, uh, then come along to that. Uh, so thank you very much. Cheers. Now, Martin Weller and I will just tell you a little bit about what's coming up um, in the next couple of months. And thank you all for attending. So 
Martin, if you want to okay. go through. Uh, Marin declined my uh, suggestion. We do this as a rap battle. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so um, coming up in the next few months, we'll be carrying on with the strategy consultation that we uh, outlined. So please uh, input to that through the various means. Um, publishing that community guide, which I think will be really useful for all the different groups we've seen uh, today. And then we'll have the winter conference, and there's also uh, an opportunity to input to the strategy there. Uh, and CMALT pathways engagement, so uh, launching that tomorrow, the, the new ones, and uh, getting people to come forward with that. Do you want to tell us any more, Marin? Just that the next meeting of the Assembly is on the 3rd of October, so less than a month away. Um, the details of the meetings and the agenda are always openly accessible to all, so please do come and join online at the meeting on the 3rd of October. Uh, so, thank you, everyone. I just want to say, I, I really... It was really good to hear from all different groups. Like, I often don't know what different groups do. So it was fascinating to hear from that. that was really, I really enjoyed hearing that. That was excellent. Uh, so thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you. Well, we've got drinks now. Is that right downstairs? So free drinks. Um, I don't know if anyone's interested in free drinks. We'll go and do that. And then see you back tomorrow. So thank you, everyone, for coming. <laughs>